Okay. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. It's four o'clock. I will call the plan commission meeting to order. Call the roll. Alder Mitchell. Here. Kim. Dave. Here. Jerry. Here. Marilyn. Here. City engineer. Here. All right. Everybody's here. If you're able, can you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, first item of business is approval of the minutes from our last meeting on February 28th. Is there such motion? I'll make that motion. Is there so motion second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes, state aye. 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 Any objection? Chair votes aye. The minutes are approved. All right, next, application for conditional use with exceptions by con quashes construction to construct a new converted covered, excuse me, covered drive through canopy at Camp Evergreen located at 2726 North 31st Place. Steve? All right, thanks, Mayor. So Camp Evergreen is here as, uh, today, as well as Quash's Construction. What we're taking a look at is they are looking to construct a new uh, drive-through canopy. Um, several years ago, they came to the Plan Commission, and they're located along Apache Drive in North 31st Place, and their original driveway was just on the south end. So if, you, if we could get a, a, a pictures of the site plan on the screen, that'd be fantastic. Um, and so, so the uh, uh, driveway was on the south end of the parcel. There we go, thank you. And so they recently came in and were able to uh, get approved a new driveway. And the reason for that new driveway is their facility is up here. And um, some may or may not know, but Camp Evergreen deals with a, uh, a number of people that have disabilities. So oftentimes we're bringing wheelchair accessible vans and different things like that to the site to get people to and from the site. So it was a, a big deal to get them from this driveway over here to the new driveway that allowed closer access to the building. Now they are looking at constructing uh, a new covered patio especially for times of inclement weather, uh, it can be uh, kind of dangerous and, and, and difficult to transfer some of the people with the disabilities into the um, facility. So now in this inclement weather, they would have this canopy that will match much of the materials of the existing building. Uh, you can see some of the stone and different things like that with the canopy, so it's dressed up nice. You can see these are the, uh, some of the examples of uh, the workers and the clients who are attending and in inclement weather, how that uh, could be a challenge. So this canopy will rectify many of those issues. So staff was recommending approval of the conditional use subject to the conditions you have and the applicants are here. I don't believe there's any neighbors here for this. Okay. Um, anyone from Camp Evergreen? Mark? Steve, you pretty much summed it all up. Um, I'm Mark from Camp Evergreen, and uh, the circular driveway has been just amazing. Uh, we've had that for a number of years now, and for our campers to be dropped off that close is just absolutely amazing. Um, and the canopy or portico um, will keep them dry. Uh, we have people that get unloaded from wheelchair vans and personal vehicles, and uh, they get rained on, they get snowed on. Um, there's also the question of, you know, snow removal, which of course we take care of, but it's never perfect and uh, keep that whole area under there free of snow and, and slipperiness will be ideal. So um, that's really all there is to it. So. Any questions at all on design? Questions from commission members? Motion. I'll make that motion to approve good work, Camp Evergreen. Second. Motion second. Final thoughts? Seeing none. All those in favor of approval, state aye. 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 Any objection? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. All right. Number six. Application for conditional use with exceptions by Abigail Lesprince to convert the single family residence into a two family residence at 
2002 North 20th. Steve. All right. Thanks, Mayor. Um, Abigail Lesperance is here and Samuel Leepak, and they are the uh, owners of the single family home at uh, 2002 North 20th Street. So you can have some pictures. I, I, there's a neighbor here as well on this one, Mayor. Um, so what they are looking to do is they're looking to renovate the property and looking to reside in the lower half and have the ability to uh, rent the upper portion. Some of the things that they will do as part of the approval will be to uh, pave some of the parking areas in the back. Right now, there's just a, a smaller garage. And, and so you can kind of see the small garage and there's a little bit of gravel. And so what they would be looking to do is to you know, potentially add some paving so that they can have, uh, you know, that there's a little bit of trailer and boat, and oftentimes we have that, they can have that, um, those uh, equipment in that backyard, but it typically has to be on a paved surface, and that's some of the things that they would be looking at. Um, other than that, they're looking to um, separate the areas, uh, separate heating, cooling, uh, adding stoves to the, uh, the and kitchen to the upper level, looking to stain the house, replace some of the wooden railings, and do some additional landscaping. So, um, so other than that, and, and um, the plan commission should be aware that I believe in the early 2000s that this had been previously used as a duplex. A different owner had converted it to a single family. So um, uh, these guys are looking at um, uh, converting it back into the duplex and staff was recommending approval. The only item that we may want to discuss and have the applicants uh, uh, comment on is we are t talking about having the gravel areas paved by September 29th of 2023 and just thought I'd like to hear what they might have to say as their plans with that. All right, does the applicant have any yes. additional information? Yeah, I thought uh, that seemed like a pretty uh, reasonable time frame for the uh, pavement in the backyard there. Uh, we have been reaching out to some concrete uh, con contractors and uh, hopefully uh, we can get something done, you know, within the, within the spring or summer time frame. So um, any tenants would be able to uh, stay off the gravel and uh, hopefully stay off the street as well. Oh, Jerry. Thank you, Mayor. Could you walk us through a little more about how you're going to split up the parking in the back? Uh, you know, which portion will you use? Which will be available for the ten tenants uh, after paving? Uh, just so we have an idea of how that will be divided up. Sure. Yeah, so um, we kind of initially thought a 24 by 24 inch or uh, foot slab for in the back. There is a single car garage there that most likely we would use. Um, we've also thought of the idea of um, planning the slab to possibly be poured for an actual garage at one point um, in, in the future. So the, the slab itself should uh, accommodate three vehicles. Um, so we have two cars and um, the upstairs is a single, it's a single bedroom, so most likely be, be uh, one or two cars as well. So there should be enough there where everybody would be able to park. Yeah, thank you. Additional comments from commission members? Are there anyone from the public here wishing to speak? Sure. Would you be able to come to the microphone, ma'am? I just had a question. I have an, a, a fence up there, and I know that the parking has to be, or the, or the driveway has to be a certain distance from the fence. Otherwise, it has to drop down to four feet and be 50% open. Yeah, are, are you in the um, home to the south or to the north? To the south. To the south. So basically, the, the, the dropping down of the fence is usually at intersections so, or in front yards or corner lots. So they could technically, the fence technically, whether it's you or the, uh, um, your neighbors, could be six uh, feet high um, in the rear yard along the alley. The setback for the paving would need to be a minimum of three feet from your property line. Okay, and then it can stay the way it is? 
The fence? Yeah. And is that your fence? My fence. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, there wouldn't be anything that they would be touching on your end. And so if your fence is six feet high, it's allowed to be there and you would have to do anything to your stuff. Okay. That's the only question I have. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Motions, comments from commission members? Oops. Oh, I'm sorry. I make a motion to approve subject to staff recommendations. Second. Motion and second. Final thoughts? Seeing none. All those in favor of approval, state aye. 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 Any objection? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Madam, item number seven. Application for condition use and sign permits with exceptions by Graphic House to install new signage at Associated Bank located at 1217 North Taylor Drive. Steve? All right. Um... So we're taking a look at the Associated Bank. This is uh, at the northeast intersection of Wilgus and Taylor Drive. So Marcus Theater is kind of kitty corner, the gas station over here. Um, and so what they're looking at is they have a number of existing signs. There's two existing monument signs. There are three existing directional signs. And then there are a couple smaller signs on the ATM. Um, uh, Associated Bank is in the process of rebranding, and along with that rebranding, they're hopeful to uh, uh, change the design of their existing signs. So all these signs are existing that we're talking about replacing. The reason why they're here today is that the maximum height for a monument sign is eight feet tall. And when they came in about 10, 12 years ago for the signs you see here today, they also came in at that time for an, uh, a variance and that was to have it nine feet, three inches. So the sign itself is basically the same height as what's there now. The other, I, so these are the two um, monument signs they're looking to replace. So again, those are located at the driveway along Taylor and then at the intersection of Wilgus and Taylor. Then they're taking a look at the directional signage. So you can see the existing three signs that they're looking at. Um, the directional signage, they are changing from nine square feet to 12 square feet, and the maximum size on that is nine square feet. So they are asking for three additional uh, feet on that. So they are asking for a variance on that. And then they're just replacing the ATM signage. Um, the thought process where um, they're at with regards to the variances is you can kind of see the intersection at Wilgus and Taylor, and there are a number of different turning movements in that area in a lot of short distances, signal here, signal here. And so the idea was to A, rebrand, but to also provide some larger directional signage so that it makes it easier for their clients or whomever to know exactly where the ingress egress points are on there. So staff was um, recommending approval of the conditional use permits, the signs and the exceptions that are requested. So the applicants here, and I believe, did the, and there's a neighbor here as well on this one. Does the applicant have any additional information to add? Thank you. Anyone from the public wishing to speak on this one? Okay. Uh, Dave and Jerry? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just curious, uh, Are you? is the whole sign going to be redone? Because the ones you have right now, because I drop off a night deposit there after making Spirits Bright, they're a little okay. dim. I'm just wondering, are you relighting those as yeah. well? Yeah. Oh, so okay. The two, the two main monument signs, we're going to reuse the existing base take off the top cabinet and put a brand new cabinet on top that's lit with LEDs, so it should be a little more visible. Great. Well. I'm yeah. sure that'll look Needs very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Jerry? Just out of curiosity, what exactly is changing about the sign? <laughs> um, it's a great question. It is kind of hard to tell. So the new logo for Associate Bank, if you look to the right of our drawing, our rendering on the bottom, it's actually rounded on each end, where the old cabinet is just a square box. Oh, okay. So their new branding is making it more radius on the ends. Got it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you bet. Everyone was thinking it. Jerry asked it, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Cool. Motions? Make a motion to approve all the staff recommendations. 
Second. Motion and second. Any final thoughts? Seeing none. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any objections? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Item eight. Application for conditional use permit with exceptions by HR Construction Company to construct and operate a new car wash, quick lube, and emissions testing facility at the Sheboygan Auto Group property located at 2701 Washington Avenue. Steve? All right. Um, thanks, Mayor. So we're taking a look at... Um, hey, Jason. Good timing. Um, so, so we have representatives from... Uh, Sheboygan Chevy and Excel Engineering who are here for this uh, particular project. In September of 2022, the uh, applicants were here and the plan commission had previously approved this project. Uh, subsequent to that, they did some budgeting and the numbers came out maybe a little bit higher than they were anticipating. So they're coming back and the really the only change to the um, structure itself is that previously they had two car wash bays on this on the east side of the facility and we'll see that in the drawing but now they're only going to have one car wash bay they'll have three oil changes and then if anyone's been there i guess one of the things is is that the emissions do quite a bit of uh um they do a lot of emissions there and that's in the uh, gm building correct and and so that this will take uh, uh, the emissions on over to this building so presently they have um, uh, there's two facilities the car wash and the oil change and now they're basically looking at constructing all of that into the one facility so like I said the plan commission had the opportunity to approve this in 2022 the only thing that's changed is right here is there was that second car wash bay. It's a single bay now. So staff was recommending approval of the proposal and uh, the conditions and the applicants are here if anyone has any questions. All right. Any thoughts from the applicant? Anything else? Questions from commission members? Uh, Jerry? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was just at the facility on yesterday, actually, to get my uh, admissions. The question I have about the new location, will either, you, will you have the choice to go into the admissions lane. Can the other lane handle any overflow in case you get backed up like at the end of the month? Could they take on some emission testing as well? Would you be able, would you be able to come to the microphone just so we can get you on? No problem. Thank you. So that's a really good question because we've been in contact with the state. The state is the one that provides mm -hmm. us with the computers. We're doing, right now, we're doing about 140 emission tests a day. Yeah, I believe it. So we're one of the only ones doing it right now. So this is going to alleviate so much of our traffic into our service. We'll at least have for our customers, they'll have two lanes now to drive in for service. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that's gonna do is when they come around, I mean, they wrap around all the way back to our stoplights sometimes during the day when it's so busy. And I mean, I have two people that when it gets that busy, I call another person in so that I have two stations mm -hmm. going at one time. So I will have two stations set up at our other location. We're trying to let them give us another computer, which I think they're going to do because they fund that computer. Mm -hmm. um, and I do believe that they are going to do it so I can have one other lane if we don't have a lot of oil changes that I'm able to bring that person up. I mean, the ultimate thing would be to have one in each lane so that they can have their oil change done and their <laughs> um, emissions test done. So, because and while they're doing the oil change, we could just do the emission test if for the ones that have it. But not everyone comes for an oil change at the same time they do their emissions. So, but the state, I do believe the state is going to give us another computer. So I will have one lane for sure. Mm -hmm. And if that goes well, then maybe we'll, they'll give us more. Because as far as I know, from what they told us, we do more emissions tests in the state than any other facility. Um, in Wisconsin, so. Well, I think that's the, also the, you brought up the bigger question 
I've been in that oil change line when it's three, four cars deep in each Correct. line. So then what do you, are they still going to have to go around to get like a, a wheel line or no, ro rotation all, all in one bay? The nicest, and this is probably the nicest thing of, of our new quick loop. Our employees right now, they have a spot probably that deep mm -hmm. that they have to get on a, a, a it's like a little bike and roll up underneath it. The new facility has its actual, there's a room underneath. So there's no more of that for them. So it's gonna be so much nicer for our employees. Each of our oil change um, lanes will have an actual lift. So we're able to do tire rotations right there on the spot. So they don't have to pull in then get their oil changed and then pull out and drive around to our last lane that we had the lift on. And back then, that was state of the art. And now it's, I mean, like I say, that was 20, 24 years ago when we built the other one. So, um, like I say, it's just, it's time. It, it, and it's a, a nice facility. We're going to be able to do a few more things for our customers in here that we couldn't do. We will have a little waiting lounge, so if people don't want to sit in their car, they can actually get out and go over and, and sit in a, a, a lounge and uh, use their computer, things like that. So it's, it's going to be a lot nicer and up-to-date facility, um, which I think will benefit our employees and our customers. So Thank you. Cool. Very much. Sounds good. Uh, can you tell me when is the least busy time for emission? <laughs> <laughs> is someone asking for? I, I and I will tell you, it's, it, it is hit or miss. Okay. But generally, if you get there right away in the morning, um, we don't, we'll have maybe three, four cars. If you come at lunchtime, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy how it is. And the beginning of the month and the end of the month are just wild because the ones that just get them, that want to get their stuff done right away, they're there. And at the end, it's the people that procrastinate and, oh, I got to get that done <laughs> so I'm not late. So, hey, Jerry, it is the end of the month. So, huh? <laughs> so <laughs> the middle of, of, of the month. And how early do you open? Seven, we, the, it runs from 730 okay. until 430. Thank you. So what we're gonna, but what we're gonna try and do is with when our with our quick lane being open, we're gonna try and keep our hours of our quick lube and emissions the same. So I'll have more people there that I I'm hoping to get more people trained on doing emissions testing so that we can keep it open a little bit longer and it'll open a little bit earlier for our customers. So cool. Can I make the motion to approve, subject to staff recommendations? There you go. Is right. there a second? Second. All right, motion second. Final thoughts? Can I ask one question? Yes, Steve. Hey, um, Jason, anything up uh, dumpster? Um, is, are we going with uh, the masonry? And um, and then I didn't know if there was anything up with vacuums. I know there's vacuums now. I think the last time we said there wasn't going to be any vacuums. Yeah, we, we had decided that we weren't going to, we're going to take that vacuum out yeah. and not have a vacuum at all. I was just looking at that sheet. I think it was AC 1.2. I think that was the uh, enclosure. So I believe it's masonry. Yeah. Okay. All right. Correct. Sounds is that good. for the where we're going to dumpster enclosure? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that's yep. going on the corner of the building here. Yeah. Okay. Northwest corner. Sounds good. Cool. There's been a motion second. All those in favor, state aye. 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 In Thank the you. opposition, chair votes aye. That's approved. All right, item number nine, general ordinance 29-22-23 by Alder Persons Prella granting Sheboygan Self Stor Storage LLC its successors and assigns the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of South 13th Street and Kentucky Avenue right of way in the city of Sheboygan for the purposes of addressing the existing building structure emergency egress and adding the sunshade feature. Steve. Thanks, Mayor. Um, Joe Bernowski is here from JB Site Design and he's working on behalf of the owner at 1234 Kentucky. So the plan commission may recall that we had previously approved certain uses at this building. This is uh, where they're doing the remodel of the old Wisconsin wood crafters, a little bit of a mixed use of some mini storage, as well as some commercial tenant space. 
Um, one of the variant or the ex one of the encroachments being asked for this evening is for this sunshade that uh, uh, is a, a, a little attractive accent piece to the entrance. And so that is going over the city walkway. So they're asking for an encroachment for that accent. Then they are looking at um, in the building, there are two internal stairways and one of the, uh, and their emergency stairways and one of the stairways is coming off on 13th street. And when it comes off on 13th street, it, it's coming off in this area and the grades don't allow for it to come out to grade. So they're gonna have to build a stoop in the sidewalk area. And one of the things that the applicant's been working with the engineering department is to work on the city sidewalk so that uh, would allow the encroachment for the stoop to go next to the building, but then the applicant would uh, go ahead and change the sidewalk, the city walk, to just curve around that portion within the green space in that area. So it would allow the applicants to get their emergency stoop in for their emergency access, yet we would still be able to have that sidewalk basically the stoop would be approximately in this area and the walk would go into the into the green space a little bit and then come back over to where it is. So there's just a little bit of that section along that doorway that would be changed and the applicants agreed to uh, relocate that sidewalk and reconstruct it. Um, and then I think there was, oh, the existing structure in just a couple of areas just exceed it goes over the property line so we are just taking care of those encroachments at this time as well so i can answer any questions and uh, mr bernowski is here and he could answer any questions as well and and ryan's been involved in this uh, helping us out as well cool anything else questions comments kim i have a question about that um encroachment at one point, does that hangover sort of also work or be thought of as a marquee coming out over the sidewalk? How many feet? I can't. I, I can't remember exactly how many. Oh, the sunshade it actually says it. In the sunshade's three feet out. Three feet. Yeah, okay. Three feet. And then I think it's thirteen feet tall. I believe, um, like height wise. Off above. grade. Yeah, off the sidewalk. That's yeah. thirteen feet. So three feet. A wide, I think that is. You got a, you got an image of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. speed, three feet. Yeah, we see the same thing. Yeah, he, he has a, a rendering. It's on that rendering that he had there. Cool. Yeah, that one. Yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's thirteen feet up. Is there a fee, a yearly fee, for that to be there? The um, and, and Ryan, could, it's it's a, Ryan. Oh, you were on. The, the the encroachment is a, is a one time fee, one time, and it's uh, it's a dollar per square foot, and you and you just pay that once. It's not it's not yearly. So our encroachment is a legal description that right. encompasses that sunshade and the stairs, and allows us then to build them in the right of way. And we're also picking up there's like 18 inches of the building that's in the right of way right now too. So. If that's three feet wide, then at what point does it become something that's paid for each year as an assessment? Um, you're going with the marquee sign. That this is well, an awning. This too. is an awning, there were and awnings. a marquee or a projecting sign mm -hmm. pays a, a fee. So this does not have any signage on it. This is strictly um, uh, an accent piece. If there was, say, for example, one, two, three, four, Kentucky on that uh, sunshade, then they would pay a yearly fee for the encroachment of that sign projecting in the right of way. So all of the signs that project into the right of way. So what I mean by project is oftentimes those signs almost look like a flag coming off the building. Mm -hmm. um, and if those are in the right of way, they pay a yearly fee for those signs. In this case, it's strictly just an encroachment because it's not considered a sign. Thank you. Additional questions? Any motions? Make a motion to approve all the staff recommendations. Motion second. 
Final thoughts? All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any objection? Chair votes aye. It's approved. All right. Number 10. Thanks, Jill. RO number 118 22 23 by city clerk submitting an encroachment request for JV Site Design and Engineering LLC pursuant to the request of the owner of South 13th Street in Kentucky right away for the purpose of addressing the existing building structure, emergency egress, and adding a sunshade. We might be on the next one. I think that's the one we just did. Well, there's a general ordinance and oh, there's a Oh, I'm sorry, so man. They're, You're they're right. the same. I'm sorry. But nope. Oh, my bad. We have, we're government. We're bureaucratic. Right. We have to do things. Sorry about yeah. that. No, no, it's all good. So well, basic, I think Steve already basic, explained it. Basically, so we get a resolution <laughs> and an ordinance. This is doing the same exact thing. <laughs> Staff recommends a, recommending approval. Jerry made a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, state aye. 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 I'm sorry. Man. No, it's all good. Chair votes aye. It's approved. Makes it quicker, right? All right. RO. 154 23 by Elder Persons Feldy and Flicky Paneski vacating the east west alley between South 10th Street and former South Commerce Street located in block 243 of the original plot. Steve. All right, so this is an unimproved alley, and at the next plan commission meeting, you will probably be seeing um, the proposed development that you kind of see here with some. Uh, townhouses along 18th Street and 83 units of uh, uh, 55 and older uh, apartments on what's referred to as the old capsule building. The item that we're talking about this evening is this section of what's referred to as an unimproved alley. You can see that it's all grass. There's, it's not being utilized as an alley. However, on paper, um, uh, it, it is right away or an alley. So what is being requested and the redevelopment authority owns the property right now. And what the city is asking is to vacate that so that the applicant can then purchase the property and bring this development to you at the next uh, meeting or two to come before you in order to develop what you see here. That vacation of right away is probably right in about kind of this area here. And there will be um, uh, things, uh, we right now have the bike path that goes to Indiana Avenue. And there was always a thought of trying to use the railroad right away to head east. And that would include this section and that section would be included in the uh, uh, development as far as sidewalk and things like that. So if we ever do get that link between here and the existing bike path, there's an ability to make that connection. So staff is recommending that we do vacate uh, the right of way or, oh, and, and mayor. Um, the, the resolution uh, presently has the wrong state statute number. So when we um, uh, uh, recommend approval, if someone could just amend the resolution to change the state statute number to 66.1003, subparagraph three. Okay. First, we'll start with questions. Any questions? Okay, so first we need a motion to approve. So moved. And then there's a second. And now we need an, a motion to amend to reflect 66.1003 subsection three. Is there a second? second. Motion and second. All right, first we'll vote on the amendment to amend the, or, the resolution to reflect the proper state statute. All those in favor of the amendment, please state aye. Aye. Any objection? Chair votes aye, the amendment is approved. Now back to the main motion as amended. Any questions on the main motion as amended? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the motion as amended, please state aye. Aye. Any objection? Chair votes aye. That item is approved as amended. Cool. Next meeting, April 11th. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion second. All those in favor of adjournment, state aye. 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 Chair votes aye. We're adjourned at four, three, four.